she's actually my sister-in-law as well. And when she started her journey, she invited us to a class, um, as in Ned, my son and I, um, to her class at her house. And I think Ned would have only been, oh, what, a couple of months old or... Not even, I would say a couple of months. Not even, yeah. And um, I went along for the free food, honestly. I was kind of like, I'm there to support you. Like, you know, if this is what you want to do. Like, <laughs> humouring me. She was humouring me. I was humouring her. <laughs> and I knew that there was going to be Baker's Delight treats because <laughs> Ash always supplies Baker's Delight treats. So I went along. It was a nappy bag makeover. And obviously I was interested in natural solutions, perhaps for Ned. Um, but I didn't sign up. I just went to support Ash. And it wasn't until Ash actually gave me a sample of the oils um, that I had my real aha moment and the addiction started. Uh -huh. um, and it wasn't necessarily even to do with sleep as such it was more that witching hour so that time leading up um you know to bedtime which was horrendous because if you've got a witching hour where your kids screaming and um you know you can carry that energy into bed yeah. you're never going to get anywhere so i will never ever forget it ash gave me a sample of roman chamomile and vetiver I went around and stole my mother-in-law's diffuser because I didn't have one and she was away in England at the time. And it was like this bubble of calm just went through my house because it wasn't just Ned, it was me and it was Ben. You know, we were all feeding off each other's energies and it was hectic. It was static. You know, that's what I like to refer to that time as. There was just static in the air. Like everyone was, you know, nippy at each other and everything. So I put Roman Cannibal and Vetiver in the diffuser and I walked around for a bit and Ned was just lying on the floor, like as a baby, newborn, or, you know, fairly new, lying on the floor, just babbling away. Ben was sitting on the couch, just, you know, calm as, and I was calm. And I was like, okay, you've got my attention. All right, <laughs> like, let's, let's see what else we can do. And it wasn't until I got that witching hour under wraps that that calm then ended up flowing into the bed um you know into the nursery and into bedtime so creating that calm um you know at about 4 30 5 o'clock i'd pop the diffuser on and get everyone winding down and then we would get to um you know bedtime and i was still feeding at the time i'd feed him and put him down and walk out and you know granted it took it took maybe a week to get him used to me not being in there, but I knew that he was a lot calmer in there. So um, I started, I think I purchased in August last year, so it hasn't even been 12 months yet. And the sleep now that we're getting is absolutely incredible. The diffuser is on every night. Um, peace is always there. I'm using holiday peace at the moment because I just love Christmas. <laughs> and, and you know i i know that if i walk into that nursery i've got someone in there that has my back so i feel like i'm able to be that bit stronger and that little bit more um tough love that wasn't something that was in my vocabulary before i had this support um because i know that as soon as i shut that door he's going to have that support coming from the diffuser so yeah. wow yeah. that's such a good way of looking at it yeah, yeah, they got my back. <laughs> They're so, in my corner. One thing I love about you two is seeing the testimonials come through and seeing them pop up on your Facebook or your Insta, how you have literally helped a mum, one mum at a time, as you guys say. People we don't even know, though. Yeah, and that's right. Oh, I was saying to a girl the other day, um, her husband was a bit sceptical They'd been using the oils for a couple of nights and he said his piece to her that he was like, obviously, you know, whatever, they don't work type of thing. And she's like, well, you can't make a baby, like you can't tell a baby what to do. Hmm. Like I'm not going up and whispering into a baby's ear. Like, <laughs> now, I need you to make these oils work. Like, I want daddy's like, credit card. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't do that. And so I think this is the perfect, like, Using oils on kids is the perfect testimonial because mm. 
kids don't lie. Well, no, they do lie. They, <laughs> but they can't like they can't. They don't know how to lie about this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think getting the testimonials from random people that literally hunt you down on the internet. Mm. Like, I love helping my family and friends out, but when a complete stranger who I don't even have any mutual Facebook friends with mm. is coming and rocking up on my doorstep, mm. what more can you ask for? Yeah. And just that feeling of, um, and especially I, I actually don't know what it's like to have a child without essential oils. Now I only have two, three months, um, without that support there. And so a lot of the times I say to people, I actually don't know what my son's like. He might be an absolute <laughs> asshole, but because of these, <laughs> because of these oils, he's so chilled out. And that's something that a lot of people do say to me, like, you know, your son's so chilled out. He's just so, you know, happy go lucky, blah, blah, blah. But because even just those couple of months being so sleepless and going crazy, mm. I can relate to that. That feeling of being able to help mums get out of that funk is next to none because this is a bloody hard job being a mum. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't discover them till Max was three. And that's when we started the Vetiver, Clary Sage and Juniper Berry Mist. And that was when he stopped waking religiously at night and started sleeping through. Yeah. So I wish I had have had them back yeah. when I had a baby, just for everything, teething, Absolutely. Ear infections, like everything. But Steph, when someone comes to you and says, I need help, what do you do from there? Um, so <clears throat> the biggest thing for me is I want to get as much information as possible about what's happening, but also around their day, because I think sometimes it can feel like oils are a magical bean. Do you know what I mean? And so it's like, I'm just going to put a drop of oil on this pillow and he's going to sleep all the night through. So that's not the case. Um, every individual child is different. And so I do try and get as much information as I can um, because you never know what's going on. You know, they could have reflux. They could have an illness. They could, um, you know, be sleeping a lot through the day. So, you know, there are other things that come into um, you know, come into play there. So I'll try and get as much information as possible um, and then I'll usually give two to three samples, um, follow up in a few days and then, um, you know, if they've had great results and that's great, if they're like, oh, he was still really fidgety or he was still really this or really that, um, then we'll go back to the drawing board and I'll, I'll keep going until I find something because there's, there will be something it's just a matter of finding what that, um, what that real issue is. Yeah. So, um, a lot of it is, um, I love making new mum friends. So <laughs> people love talking about their kids. So it's pretty easy. <laughs> so true, isn't it? Especially when you've got a solution. Exactly. And, and the testimonials and the track record, you know that you're going to be able to help them, even if it's not 100%. Like, yep. even if you can get an extra hour or two exactly. between the wakes and the feeds or an extra hour in the morning before they're up, it makes all the difference to and us. And that's something that I do like to mention to people as well because I think a lot of the time people think that it is going to be that magical bean where they can say, you know, it didn't work. You know, I've been using it for a night and it didn't work. And so I really try and and get people thinking about it. And it's like, well, didn't it work? Like, what was, your, what did your night look like before? And what did it look like the night you used it? It's like, oh, well, usually he screams for three hours and he screamed for an hour still. It's like, you gained two hours. Yeah, that's right. Like, that's yeah. still amazing. Like, take that win. Just take it. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I think you have to have realistic expectations of what these oils are. Mm -hmm. um, and so... You know, you need to be aware that it might take a week to get back into a, into the groove of things. There's such things as the body clocks and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so I always say, you know, a baby, uh, an oil's not going to get a baby who's co-slept, fed to sleep, um, you know, waking 10 times a night in their bed, sleeping through. It's unrealistic and it's putting too much pressure on yourself, the baby and your oils, you know. So... It's about sticking it out too. 
Um, Ash, what's the most successful advice you've given mums regarding oils for kids' sleep? Yeah, it's actually funny because my advice is very similar to what Steph was just talking about then. Um, don't go into using an oil expecting that it's just going to change like that. You need to also assess what is going on around your child. Um, if your child is watching TV right up until the minute they go to bed, well, their little brain is going to be so stimulated. It's not just going to switch off. Like, you know, turn the telly off. Have a nice, calm nighttime routine. Um, I had a mum who I sampled some oils to and oils worked great for like the first week or so and then she said oh you know still taking you ages to go to sleep blah 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 and I said like so the daughter was older and I said have you actually spoken to her does she have something on her mind like everything that we've discussed you know it sounds pretty stock standard but I think you need, might need to just delve a little bit deeper and find out what the actual issue is mm. that there were issues at school and this, that was playing on her mind. So yeah. your brain's not going to switch off. If you're lying in bed, you can have all the oils under the sun lathered on you. But if you're lying there and you're consciously think, 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 or watching tally or on the iPad or running around crazy and having a packet of Skittles before bed, look at it not going to work like so my advice is you need to assess the whole situation don't come into it just thinking that it's a magical potion and it's going to fix all your worries yeah um, it will help assist all your worries but you just need to work out how to use them correctly and how they can fit in with your lifestyle mm. i think that's fantastic fantastic because you don't want people to think that boom this is the magic pill like no it's a process and, um, yeah, it's good to know that you girls, you know, stick with everyone for the process. Yeah. You try different things and that's so important. And you have to be real about it. Like, you can't just, you can't just tell people, oh, this will change your life, blah, 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 just to make a sale. Hmm. Like, and then because at the end of the day, if they're not using them correctly, yeah. it's not, it's not going to benefit them. They that's need to right. know the ins and outs. They know they need to be educated. That's yeah. It. So what about day sleeps? I'm one of the mums who popped them in the car. Max wouldn't have a sleep unless it was on me. Now, if I had oils back then, I would have popped some lavender piece on my shoulder, got him to sleep and then put him into bed. I've driven him around for three hours trying to get him to sleep. What do you recommend for day sleep? Yep, for me. And see, I, I am the polar opposite. I am a self... Oh, a self-diagnosed hard-ass mum. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, I can probably count the amount of times on one hand that I've had to do the drive around in the car. Um, often it would be for my benefit, not for theirs, because I would like to go through the drive through at McDonald's uh, <laughs> and get myself some Maccas, yes. and I would just time it with a, with a nap. Yes. Um, but in terms of sleep issues and having to put them in the car, luckily... I've not had to experience that too often. For me, though, my biggest thing is making sure my children acknowledge that it's almost bedtime, whether it's nap time or um, bedtime. Obviously, I can't really get Edie to acknowledge that it's bedtime because she's one, but I'll still say the words to her, okay, Edie, 10 minutes till bedtime. Or for Isla, if it's lunchtime and she's playing in her kitchen or doing whatever, I literally, I will just walk past and I say, okay, Isla, 10 minutes, it's, it's nap time, bub. And she'll go, okay. And then when it's five minutes, Isla, in five minutes, what time is it? It's bedtime. So I, may, I say it to her and then I make her actually say it back to me yeah. because that way she's acknowledging it. Yeah. Um, as I said, for younger children, you can't really do that. But I think that um, just laying that foundation and having a bit of a routine about, you know, saying these things, leading into it, having some cues so your little ones know that it is almost bedtime. Um, I would, not so much now because there's not an issue with Isla going to bed, but when we were having some troubles, I would put the um, diffuser on in the lounge room, put peace half an hour before she went to bed. So then she's already inhaling it. It's already starting to do its thing. Yep. And then I'd move that diffuser into her room. Yep. Um, she is now... <laughs> 
She is a very smart little girl. She's not even three yet. And she will now turn off the diffuser. She knows that's when I was like using it when we were having sleep issues. Yeah. And she says the words to me, I'm okay, mum. I don't need it today. Oh. I'm like, All right, we'll hop into bed and go to sleep then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, it's just about setting those boundaries, putting the diffuser on, creating the calm beforehand. Yeah. Um, and yeah. That's how, that's how I would do it. Um, just trying to think of what else I would have to do. I just usually, I usually put them in their bed and they're all right. Touch wood. I say that and tonight my children are going to be <laughs> I was about to say touch wood. Yeah. The sleep got to be like, this mother is too cocky. <laughs> I have to say that that has been such um, a game changer for us. You know, Ned's only one, but the... The lead up to any bedtime is the same in our house. So I will start saying, you know, bedtime, bedtime, even if it is just the word bed, he knows that word. Um, and so it's, I think it works because it's not such a shock, you know, like if they're just playing and you pick them up and chuck them in their bed, they're like, hang on, I was playing with that. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, whereas if you are preparing them like that, it's not a shock that they're going to bed. You know, even nice. as, young, as young kids, you know, Ned knows the sound of the microwave now from bottles. Ned used to know the sound of the kettle. You know, Ned now, you can tell when Ned's tired because he gets really red eyebrows. Now I say the word bottle to him and it's just bang, red eyebrows. And he's just like, <laughs> you know. And so it is, it's creating that consistency um, because then they're, they're, it's not a shock to them. Yeah. And I think as well, oh, sorry, Kayleen, I was just going to, I've just forgot yeah. this for one. I think as well, um, it's also about using your oils in the good times as well as the bad times. So you're not just using the oil when your children's having a crappy night. You're using those oils even when they're sleeping well or even if they're, you know, they're settling easily. Still use those oils because they're going to then associate that smell with like a familiar setting, with comfort. Um, it's going to be a good memory to them. Like mm -hmm. I know I will smell, I don't know, something and it will trigger an instant memory i'll hear a song and it'll trigger an instant memory kids are the same so yeah. um often when steph comes over with ned we'll lather up the oils in his um port -cot because it's a different environment for him but with that familiar smell it's easy for him to settle and then we have all three children asleep at the same time and, and it, it's it's amazing and we work i mean <laughs> i mean watch reality tv um <laughs> But it's so true. And while we were away, we've just come back from a week camping. And so that's in a tent with lots of noise and, um, you know, different temperature. But it still was peace. It was still holiday peace and it was still console. And he just grabs that bunny and snuggles in and he knows that he's, I was, he knows his home. You know, like it really does. Um, the aromatic anchoring is something yeah. that is so important. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with us. We've got that too. So yeah, I think that that's um, a really good point about using it in um, good and bad times as well because you don't want the anchor to be like Isla now knows that it's um, when, she, yeah. <laughs> when she's hanging around. So, you know, you do want them to associate it with happiness as well and calm and you know, so that they can then um, lean into that feeling. So what are your most successful sleep blends, Steph? I know that you you guys talk a lot about peace and console or putting a drop of something on their blankie or their teddy at night. Can you tell us about those? So I guess peace and holiday peace, um, it all boils down to bedaba. Um, yeah. I, you know, that was in my first sample that I got with the Roman cam. Um, and I will search for that oil. If it's in a blend, I will use it. I use lavender peace for myself because I know that that vetiver is in there. Um, it is such an incredible sleep oil. Um, you know, it, it goes into the diffuser and because that oil is heavier, it, it lasts longer. It comes out after um, once the water's starting to get um, low. And I will recommend that one to anyone. So peace and console to me, um, are easy ones to sample for me because it's just the same oil. I just drop it in 
Um, it's not getting all my oils out and making little concoctions. And it's also easier for people to purchase rather than, you know, them having to then go and order, you know, 10 different oils. It's easy if you've got the whole kit or, you know, if you've got quite a lot of oils. But for someone that's starting out and they just want oils for sleep or oils for calm, um, Peace and Console are a really amazing one to start off with, I believe. And um, I use them in linen sprays and rollers. Um, I used to just roll on Ned's teddies. Um, but now I'll actually roll it on the bases of his feet as well. Yeah. But um, I think as well, if you're looking to use them with children and you don't feel comfortable applying topically or you don't have a diffuser, the linen sprays are so good. Oh. And you don't have to remember to turn them on, you know, even if you forget to do it one night, the smell's still there. So. And what are your most successful blends, Ash? Yeah, so I, like Steph, use Peace and Console. So I, for Isla, Peace in the diffuser. Um, as I mentioned, though, she is, she does um, anchor that too when we were having bad times. So even if I'm not diffusing it in her room, I'll diffuse it um, from like 5.30 onwards out in the lounge room. So I know that she's got a good hour and a half of that in her system before she goes to bed. Yeah. Um, but the other trick is, you know, rolling it on um, on her teddy because then she's as she's cuddling it. Um, so for me, when I sample, I always do a piece in the spray because most, some people that don't know, have essential oils also, yes, don't have the diffuser. The console um, roller. And recently I've just added to my little sleep pack cedarwood. So I will do a little cedarwood roller, obviously... Um, the correct dilution for a child. Um, and I just suggest that they roll it on the soles of the feet. Um, I started putting this one in when I had that daughter who had the issues at school and her brain wouldn't switch off. Mm. Um, Cedarwood is great as a bit of a circuit breaker. Um, it really just calms the body down and it just gives them time just to switch off. So using the cedar wood combined with the piece and the console touch wood, but that's, and that's had amazing success. And that's one, thank you, Steph. <laughs> um, and that's one that I generally will just sample straight off the bat. Um, if they come to me saying that they've got their child's not sleeping or they're waking up in the middle of the night, da 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 da. Um, if it sounds just like a general sleep issue, then that is my go to, those three oils. Um, and then if they come back, then we have to hash it out a little bit more. And it could be they're waking because they're having you know, a nightmare or they're waking because they've got tummy issues or they've got like a bit of gas in their tummy. So, you know, there's always something. You just mm. have to work it out. Yeah. So let's talk about teething and night terrors. Um, what do you guys use for teething? We, I know we have a very successful teething blend that works almost. 100% of the time, which also acts as a settling blend, and also night terrors, because yeah, I wish I had Juniper Berry when Max was little, because he had the worst, worst night, night terrors ever, and I know now, if I don't put Juniper Berry in his diffuser, he has a bad dream, so mm -hmm. yeah, what do you guys use for teething and night terrors? Well, I can say that we both use the same teething blend, because that was another sample that Ash gave me. <laughs> Um, because before essential oils, I was constantly giving a two-month-old baby Panadol and Nurofen because he was obviously teething. Um, and so, <laughs> so... Eating a steak at three months old. <laughs> so, well, you know, you just do your best. You don't know at the time, do you? Oh, God. Um, so the teething blend that I use is frankincense, Roman chamomile and lavender. So as you said, it does have the calming properties as well from the lavender and frankincense. Um, and also frankincense is just one of those one of those oils that can do everything. Uh, Roman, oh, absolutely amazing. I have to say that Kapiba is almost stealing oh, the crown for me. <laughs> oh yes. Move over Frankie. Hello, Kapiba. Um, I just I find myself reaching for that one a lot more and I've actually popped um, a drop of that in one of Ned's um, teething blend rollers just to see the difference. 
Yeah. Um, but then the Roman chamomile as well. So Roman chamomile has um, anti-inflammatory properties. So if you're imagining their gums and they're so swollen because they're cutting teeth through them, yeah. um, that's going to really assist them with that, um, that inflammation that's in there as well. So I've had so much success with that personally. Um, Ned has cut four molars in the last seven days. And I was even saying to Ash this morning, I was just like, you know, I maybe spoke a little too soon. <laughs> this afternoon, it was pretty crazy. But um, I don't know what it's like without it now. But uh, I don't think that other people without oils have it that breezy when they've got four molars coming through. So um, I absolutely swear by that one. And I've been getting some great testimonials um, from some mums as well about that blend. Um, I hashtag teething schmeething. <laughs> Who cares? It's great. <laughs> um, can you guys also talk about night terrors? I've just got to go open my front door. So talk about <laughs> yourself about night terrors. When you come back, I'm going to have to go and get my charger. <laughs> <laughs> um, so night terrors. Um, basically, it's one of the blends that I got sampled very early on in the piece before I joined up. I got given um, vetiver and juniper berry. It's a great combination. Uh, the juniper berry helps combat the night terrors, whereas the vetiver helps keep your little ones asleep, asleep at night. So that does work really well together. Uh, not one that I've had to sample a lot myself, but the ones that I have sampled, the people have then literally purchased the oils like the next week. Um, so I had one girl who... She had, I gave that sample to her. She had some sleep samples as well as the night terror sample. Um, and after discussions, she was umming and ahhing. And I said to her, look, at the end of the day, I'm not going to push anybody to buy oils. You know in yourself if you're going to get them or not. And so I just said to her, okay, look, see how you go. We can revisit this. Um, use the rest of the samples and just see. Hopefully it's kind of reset his body clock. He's going to stop waking up, blah, blah, blah. She was like, yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. Um, four days after she finished the samples, she messaged me and she's like, I need them because for the last four nights he's been waking up. And I was like, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you need to grab your charger, Seth, uh, Ash? Sorry? Do you need to grab your charger? Yes, I do. Let me see how much percentage have I got. 9%. Mm. I reckon I might be able to be all right. All right. So what do you say to mums that are hesitant about trying essential oils? My biggest thing is simple as, like, what have you got to lose? But not as in nothing. Like, you do have something to lose, like your sleep, your sanity, your mind. Like, you have so much more to lose than what you have to gain, you know? And it is as simple as, just putting a drop of oil on something like it's so simple whereas you know we really do we really do use essential oils as a last resort where now that I know about them they become a first resort like I can't believe how much Nurofen and Panadol friend charcoal based stuff like that I pumped into Ned and his tiny little system because I didn't know any better but then it was like, oh, maybe I'll try essential oils then because none of this works. It's like... So many people say that. So yeah. many people, like, I've tried everything. Like, well, like, I may as well just try this. Yeah, like, I'm at my wit's end. That's another yeah. one. Yeah, what do you mean? Like, it's natural. Like, yeah. it's, that's the thing that blows me. That's what, to me, what, when people, like, what have you got to lose? Exactly right. What have you got to lose? It's natural. Like, it's not going to... Yeah. Do anything bad. Yeah. And I think since I've got into um, obviously the business side of doTERRA, I have been doing a lot more research into synthetic rather than even the oils. Like I'm researching more about what I used to do. And some of them, like some of the articles that I read are just crazy, you know, about, you know, the side effects of what you're actually doing. And I was actually watching a video today from Alice Nichols and she was talking about um, your bad habit bucket. Um, I think that's what it was. And, you know, 
even though we're doing all of these and you know i like I'm not a vegan and I don't eat organic food and, you know, all that stuff. Like I do, like, <laughs> you know, like I, I don't do everything natural, but, you know, they talk about this bucket and how every little drop that you do, so that Macca's burger is going to go in there and that Coke and everything that I do and, you know, <laughs> the cigarettes and the yeah. alcohol. And, yeah. <laughs> and you might feel fine, but it's because your bucket's filling up. And, you know, when there's a bucket and it's, completely full and it kind of almost looks like it's got a bump on the top and then that one drop overflows yeah. you know, that's when people go and they're like I don't know what's wrong I've always been really healthy and it's like no it's just because your bucket's now overflowing so if I can even minimize with Ned because like Ash told me some crazy figures about you know the new generation and how I was just about to say that yeah um you know if I can even just keep that exposure down by 20 percent yeah and i'm doing my job right as a parent because that's really what my job is yeah so yeah i just um you really don't have anything to lose but you do you've got so much to lose if you yeah. don't go natural yeah. yeah that's perfectly put so you guys are running a sleep event we are yes do you want to tell us a bit about that? Because if people who are watching don't have essential oils, they may like to join into your sleep event. Yes, we're out now. Uh... Our little immediate team has decided to run a sleep event. So we're doing the three oils over three days. Um, obviously, the samples will last longer than three days, but the education side is going to go for three days. Um, we're going to be talking about, I just so have them here. Cedarwood. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you might need to talk about oils um, and consult. So um, what we're doing is we're going to focus one day on each oil. We're going to talk about uh, the way these oils are used, the way that we would recommend them using on your children. Um, not just children, they can be used on adults as well. Um, obviously, this class, because Steph and I both have children, we're talking about what we know and how we use them. Mm -hmm. The oils, they don't discriminate. They don't have an age limit. <laughs> um, so it's a really great way um, for $5. It's a really great way just to get involved. We've got a closed Facebook group where a couple of the girls, um, Steph and myself, we're all going to jump on, do a post, do a live, do some Q&A. Um, and just write down the benefits of these oils so these people have that basic education because um, so many people just don't know about them. They don't know that they actually have these amazing properties that can transform your life. Mm. Exactly. And I think as well, you know, I guess our goal, we're doing it as a weekend sampler. So our goal is that we start, you know, um, at the start of the weekend and we're hoping that you'll be able to see a difference by the end of the weekend, no matter how small that difference may be. Um, I think that it'll be a really great way to inspire other people as well. Um, be able to see these benefits, but also be able to realise that they're not alone. I think that's one thing as parents, um, as mums, you know, we're talking about women here, but um, as mums <laughs> or dads, if you're there, um, you know, sometimes you can feel so alone. And as I was saying, you know, you always have your back. They're, they're in your corner. Yeah. And so to be able to be in groups and sampling events like this where it's like, oh, other people have these issues too, um, can just make that uh, parenting world not seem so alone, you know. So... Yeah. And know that your kid's not the only one having issues at sleeping. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Just so you know, your kid's not the only one that's a turd. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so do you have any parting tips? Um, I'll get to both of you. Just any parting tips for the mummers? Um, anything you want to let them know? And, yeah. 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 Um, my my three tips. So I had given Kayleen and Steph my three tips. And then today when I was looking back at them, I realised that my number three tip, it's me to a T, but it's not everybody else. So I'll say what my three tips are. And then I'm actually going to add a fourth one in, which also isn't everybody, but that's fine. Yeah. So my first tip, and let's all just remember that we all parent different. 
our kids all respond differently. So these are my tips that work for me and my girls. Mm -hmm. um, first thing is routine. Don't chop and change. You need to keep things consistent. You know, if you're using your oils, use them consistently. Um, they're not going to do their thing if you use them just like once a week, once a fortnight. You need to actively use them um, so your children are benefiting from them. Uh, the routine also, you know, bedtime routine, um, half an hour before bed, sit on the couch, have the diffuser going in the background, read a book, quieten down, um, even though my husband comes in 10 minutes before bedtime and is like throwing the children up in the air as I literally am like shooting fire at him and he smiles. But who am I to tell him he can't have fun with our children, huh? Um, unless it's at bedtime. Uh, um, so, yeah, routine is, is a big one. The second one, um, which was one of my tips on how to have a good, good night's sleep, put your little ones down to bed on a full tummy because full tummies, they're going to sleep longer. That's what I've noticed. I had one baby that loved the milk and one baby that didn't. And the one that didn't, oh, my goodness, wow. that was hard. Um, I mean, that's, that's just, a, a, just a general thing there. My third tip, which as I said, isn't for everyone, is um, be strong because little ones know how to pull the heartstrings. Mm -hmm. They know how to manipulate their parents. Um, it got to the point, I'm just going to check my charge. Oh, I've got 3%. Um, <laughs> I got to the point with Isla... Um, at the start, no, end of last year, I actually emailed a child psychologist because I was like, I am at my wits end. I was telling her all the steps I was doing. It got to the point where I was like, you know, I'm usually so confident in my decisions, but I'm so worried that my child's going to vomit if I leave the room and blah, blah, blah. And the woman's like, don't, don't doubt yourself. Your child knows that that's how she's getting you. She knows that if she vomits, Mum's going to be there and in a heartbeat. Mum's not going to want to leave the room because she doesn't want me to vomit. And then that night, once again, on goes the piece, put her into bed, give her that reassurance. And it was the same thing by night two and three. It was much better. So routine, full tummy, be strong. And my fourth one, especially for my little one, I literally put like eight dummies in her cot. <laughs> Shower. <laughs> Yeah, at, around the perimeter. Yeah. She finds those. Um, but yeah, just be consistent with your oils. It's gonna, they're going to work. You just need to, to utilise them properly. Yeah. What I love most about this is if people don't obviously know Ash and I personally, but we, <laughs> we are so... So I always say I'm the deep one and Ash is like the... Oh, okay. The hard-ass <laughs> logic one. Yeah, logical. So Ash is very logical and I'm like, oh, that's really, yeah, it's full tummy. So yeah, I don't think of that. No. But I I was thinking about my three tips and, oh, God, I can get deep. I can get so deep. <laughs> uh, but I do believe that they're good ones. Like I do have a background in like the mental health industry and I do think that that is such a big side of it. And one of the big things that I have said it and I'll just double back on it is realistic expectations. There is no point in putting that much pressure on yourself as a mum, on a baby, baby, or the oils. You know, you're actually setting yourself up for failure and you don't want to be doing that. If you can avoid setting yourself up for failure, then it's going to be a lot easier. If you can see the wins in things. So as I was saying, if you've got a co-sleeping baby that is feeding to sleep and he's waking eight times a night, if you say, right, this oil is going to you know, get my baby to sleep all the night through in his bed, I'm not going to have to go there. You're actually putting so much pressure on a child that knows nothing else other than being next to you and feeding to sleep and... And so you're actually giving that child an opportunity to fail before they are old enough to actually be able to fail. They're just babies. So if you look each day at your child isn't sleeping and is awake for two hours and then down for half an hour and then awake for two hours or whatever it is, if you can cut that down by 15 minutes, that is amazing. Like children work in minutes. I don't know whether anyone read Save Our Sleep, but it was like 
try and come down at five past seven instead of seven. Like they work on minutes. And the bus. Our children miss the bus. Oh God. <laughs> I I honestly look back at that time of that bus and if anyone didn't read Save Their Sleep, they talk about getting on the seven o'clock bus. Literally it would be five past seven and I'd be crying because my son wasn't asleep. And like, how much pressure is that to put on a mum and a child, you know? Yeah. Um, so realistic expectations. It's going to put you in a good mindset. It's going to put a baby in a good mindset and it's going to be able to let the oils support you the way that they can. Um, my other one is consistency. Ash has already touched on that, but brave boundaries, regardless of whether they're babies or five years old or 10 years old or 20 years old. I'm not 20, I'm 28. <laughs> um, but, you know, consistency and boundaries is something that is just so, so, so important. Um, and I won't go too much into that because Ash really put that nail on the head. And I actually hadn't come up with my third one until before we started this and it's pretty bloody deep, but it's just, you've got this. Mm. Like, you've actually got this. Like, we're not the first people to be mums and we're not going to be the last ones. And, you know, I hate to say it, but people that probably shouldn't have children have children. Like, it is you making the decision to say, right, I need a better solution and I need a better way, but you've got this. Mm. Like, and you know, something with essential oils oh, is... Oh, <laughs> Nothing else is already taking such a huge step for yourself, your family, and your children. Like, it's actually, it is a huge step. Like, think of what you are doing with your children. Think about the lifestyle that you're showing them, how they can grow up, and then hopefully they, you know, use that lifestyle for their advantage, and they teach their children about essential oils and yeah. and the way. Um, and it's just, you've got this because you've got a community behind you. Yeah. If you not doing you do the community and if you have a question you put that question online and you have 37 amazing women <laughs> and right back it doesn't matter what the night it is it's amazing and i think that that's what i think that that has been probably the most beneficial thing that's come with the oils like obviously the oils are amazing like to the point where you kind of i don't even need to talk about them it's like you know but that support I really, really struggled when um, I first had Ned with that pressure that comes from seeing people that have children and, you know, the people that you meet that have newborn babies, the same as you, and, and they don't want to say how hard it is, so then you feel shit about yourself. And then people that you do know that already have children but they're older and they've forgotten how bloody hard it is. And so I'm like, well, you know, it's like, no, this is really hard. And I love that our community is actually based on problems mm. and saying I'm, I'm having, I'm having trouble, you know, and being so honest. Like I just, I don't have time. I don't have time to bullshit people for three hours every week and be like, Oh yeah, life is great. And my kid sleeps through and blah, blah. blah. It's like, Oh no, I had a really bad night last night. What do you do? What do you do? Mm. And constantly searching for that knowledge to, to make it better. I just, it's next to none. I'm, I'm so, um, proud and happy to be a part of our community. On you, Kayleen. On you, Kayleen. You think you're mama. <laughs> and I think it is important that there are support oils for us. So if we have had to resettle and you can't get back to sleep, we roll the oils on and then we're out like a light. You know? yeah. so I think it's important that there are oils to support the mama as well. Absolutely. The funny thing is, I'm not a drinker. So some people will sit down and have a wine on the couch. I don't drink. So I'm just going to, like, lather myself in some oil. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys, we're coming up to the hour. This has been fantastic. Um, I wrote down a few things that I'll just quickly mention. Um, creating that aromatic anchor is so important. So um, it triggers. It's a sleep cue. The sleep cues are triggered when the oils go on in, in the diffuser before bedtime. Yeah. Um, it's important not to set yourself up um, for, for, for expecting so much and just let the oils deliver what they're gonna deliver. Um, and jump in, like you've got, like what we were saying, you do have so much to lose. You know, you've got, <laughs> you've got the next 10 years of sleep <laughs> to lose. So get on it now and find out what works now. 
you know, there's no harm in jumping in your program, having a few little tries of some sleep oils, seeing what they're like. When you smell them, you're literally like, oh, my God, that smells amazing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just we've got it. Like, we can do this. It all comes back to the <laughs> We've got this. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. I've had a great chat and I will link um, Sahana with Ash and Steph Oil Change and people can find you there and we'll chat again soon. Can't wait. I've ended up on the floor. Look, I'm on the floor. <laughs> I'm, next, I'm next to my charging point and I'm the naughty shit. I'm next to a dartboard in my shed. <laughs> <laughs> See you girls later. Bye. Bye. See you, Kayleen. Bye.